Now, the spokesman to the Paramount Chief of Pasengpe, Sugri Dabu, has criticized the Ghana Police Service in the West Mampurisi Municipality for what he says is their inability to combat robbery attacks in the area. Now, the chief spokesperson is blaming the continued attacks by armed robbers on the failure of the police service in the municipality to successfully prosecute robbery suspects when they are arrested. Now, according to him, the youth in the area uh, have therefore decided to end their collaboration with the police in the fight against robbery attacks and other crimes. Now, the traditional leader uh, who spoke in his official capacity as a, as a uh, as a spokesperson to the um, Paramount Chief at a brief workshop put together by the NGO Peace for Life Ghana on promoting peaceful coexistence through trust building in the West Mampresi municipality had this to say. What the youth are telling us is that they will no longer collaborate with or help the police to arrest any armed robber because the police are putting their lives at risk by refusing or failing to prosecute the suspect they help to arrest. We have a regulation in our community that prevents robbery suspects from being brutalized or even killed. Yet, when we hand them over to the police to face the law, the police let them go and most of them end up committing the same crimes or targeting those who help in their arrest. The chief linguist was expressing his frustration with the rising speed of robbery attacks on the Wulugu Passing Pe Road and indeed the whole of the West Mampresi municipality, despite the relentless effort by his community, including the formation of vigilante groups to help the police combat the menace. According to him, the criminals are emboldened to carry out their robbery operations following the failure of the police to prosecute them when arrested. He said the police attitude threatened law and order which they are supposed to ensure and maintain in the municipality and thus call for the intervention of the IGP. Very recently, there was a case like that where we handed over a robber to the police, but he is back in the community again as the police have failed to prosecute him. If the police in the municipality continues to behave in this manner, they will end up destroying Mampurugu and for that matter Ghana as a whole. The chief was speaking in Waliwale at an event on promoting peaceful coexistence through trust building under the security Northern Ghana project put together by the Peace for Life Ghana with funding support from Star Ghana Foundation. In attendance were participants from different ethnic and religious backgrounds as well as representatives from WANEC and the Peace Council. Executive Director of the Peace for Life Ghana, Al Hassan Motawakil, said the police must intensify dialogue with the communities that are appear to have been aggrieved by the alleged failure to prosecute robbery crisis brought before them. The people are not happy the way things are going because it's like the, the, the security is not helping them as far as they are concerned. But I know the security is also working with, with, with the law, but we need to let each other understand at every point what is happening and what is the way forward. I think that is what is missing. And so we would also, we'll get in touch with the security, we'll sit down with them and we'll see the, the way forward. He also appealed for all the community structures and stakeholders to support for the successful implementation of the project. We need the support of, of, of government, we need the support of the, the all stakeholders, the, the, the traditional authorities, the youth, the, all the, I mean, the, 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 the community structures, we need their support to be able to make this uh, project a success. And I would also want to thank uh, Star Ghana Foundation and the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office for being behind this uh, this project. Meanwhile, this is not the first time a traditional leader in the West Mampresi municipality has accused the police of failing to protect lives and properties. In 2021, the paramount chief of so traditional area, Nantog Masedu, accused the police of colluding with criminals and vowed to order for criminals to be lynched when arrested. If we arrest, we give them, they leave them. Next time, when we we'll get them, we'll kill them. We will not give them to police again because we will kill them because they are elders and we are in Ghanaians. And elders will come to my country and he will be strong because of police he will be stronger than me the, the person in my hometown that one day is out so we are telling IDP to, to advise his people when they leave them and will arrest them again we'll kill all of them from Wale Wale Elias Sutanko for Joy News
Now, let's stay in the area because pregnant women in Kurugu in the West Mamprisi municipality of the Northeast region are forced to walk uh, more than 15 kilometers from their community to access antenatal and delivery services elsewhere due to the absence of healthcare services in their community. Now, the community is provided with a chips, a chips facility in 2015, but was abandoned without being equipped and has since remained non-functional after the change of government. Now, as a result, pregnant women in labor and other healthcare seekers in the community are bearing the brunt as they are made to travel 17 kilometers through a dilapidated road on a tricycle to the nearest health center in Wulugu for their health needs. Now, speaking to join you, some residents express concern about the rising cases of women being delivered of their babies in the bushes while on their way to the health center in Wulugu. Uh, they are therefore calling for the authorities to come to their rescue correspondent. Ilya Sutanko has more in this report. Kurgu is a large farming community located in a meander of the White Volta River near Wulugu and 23 kilometers away from the municipal capital Walewale in the northeast region. The community since its beginning has been bedeviled by many socioeconomic problems with little attention from the state authorities. The community members who live here are poor and largely uneducated, but one of the hard-working groups of people known for their large cultivation of sogum, millet and maize to feed the nation. One of the most pressing challenges facing this poor community, however, is the lack of health center to serve as source of medical care for the residents. Attempts had been made in 2015 by the then NDC administration to establish a health center which led to the construction of this chief's facility in 2016. But the facility had completely been abandoned after the government of the new patriotic party came to power in 2017. In 2020, following a joint news report, the municipal authorities attempted to equip the facility and operationalize it. But those efforts were aborted after winning again the general election in that year. As a result, pregnant women and children in particular in the community are bearing the brunt as they have to travel on a tricycle and sometimes by walking 17 kilometers to Wulugu for delivery and other healthcare services. Whilst emergency services are referred to the government hospital in Walewale. <laughs> Because the health post here isn't functioning, you have to go around to beg for a motorbike anytime you are going for antenatal care. Most often, we walk to Wuluku when we don't get a motorbike. On your way, sometimes you get help by motorist. <laughs> Those with no access to a tricycle have to travel on a motorbike on the bad road connecting the community to Wulugu and the rest of the municipality. We are appealing to the government to equip the facility in this community to end or reduce our plight on the road. Pregnant women in labor are carried on motorbikes even at night to Wulugu to be taken care of. This 32-year-old woman, Abu Hanifa, says due to the lack of a healthcare facility in the community, she was forced three years ago to deliver her baby on the road while on her way to the hospital in Walewale for delivery. She's carrying another pregnancy, which is seven months old now. She says she's afraid of the plight she would have to go through to deliver. <laughs> Due to the severe pains on that day, I had to deliver my baby on the way. The pains were unbearable, which made me very weak, even before we managed to get to the hospital with my baby. It was a very bad experience for me, which I do not wish to go through again. Inside the facility, only two beds in addition to two wooden benches are serving all kinds of patients brought to the facility. In addition, the facility lacks laboratory and medical supplies. Two staff are managing the facility without a midwife to attend to pregnant patients. Cases are sometimes recorded under this tree whilst at the facility. This man was brought there after he complained of being dizzy and this was how he was attended to.
In response, the municipal chief executive for the area, Arumiya Osomolaki Basintali, said efforts were in place to address the challenges in the community. He, however, called for support from NGOs and donor organizations. The best are not enough. What we provided as an assembly on specific to chief's campaign is there, but where they are as a remote community, we need to get more best so that at least they can detain more of the people here. Government alone cannot do the work. We need more support to come. I have about 126 communities in West Memphis. And going around all of them, I have more than 17 chiefs campus. It means a lot. Last time we gave them a motorbike and some other uh, logistics to start. So as time goes on, we'll try to solve the problem. But indeed, the community needs some support. And I am aware, as a minister of security, we are going to work on it. I will collaborate with the Ghana Health Service to see how best we can make this police an enviable place. Reporting from Kurugu, Elias Sutanko, for Joy News. Now, healthcare delivery in the Chiapiase Health Centre in the Ashanti region is expected to improve following the completion of a ward for male patients there. Now, over the years, both males and females have shared the same ward, a situation health officials say have compromised service delivery in the facility. Now, through the Church of Pentecost Men Ministry, Men's Ministry in the Obwasi Municipality, a 15-bed capacity um, male ward was built at a cost of over 166,000 Ghana cities. And Ajima has more in the following report. The health center serves the people within Chiampiase community and its environs. Both male and female patients on admission are forced to share a ward, breaching privacy. District Health Director for Amancia Central and Prechum Opon Ahmed explains the impact on healthcare delivery. Initially, people were competing, our clients were competing, both male and female were in the same room, especially when it comes to treatment and privacy of patients. So males have their separate ward and then the females will also have their ward. Under the Church of Pentecost Community Transformation Agenda, a 15-bed capacity male ward has been constructed at a health center. The men's ministry of the church led the construction of the facility. Area head for the church, Apostle William Boachie Jacon, explains the intervention. We have community transformation in that vision. It means that first of all, we have to give Jesus to the community, wherever we find ourselves, because it is Jesus who will bring transformation. So first of all, we give Jesus to the people. And after they have accepted Jesus, we know that their lives will be transformed. And they also need things. Everybody needs something. And we also try as much as possible to help the community of their needs. If they are in need of water and hospital and school, uh, we try to also help. We cannot do everything. So we do what we can to help the community. Bekwai John Swahine, or Hineba Kwejo Intoso III, commended the Church of Pentecost for their role in provision of social amenities. Welcome back from the break. Now, security analyst Dr. Ishmael Norman um, has condemned Minister for Food and Agriculture, Brian Champon, for instigating and inflaming tension with his comment about the upcoming elections. Mr. Champon was heard addressing party uh, um, supporters at Impriest in the Eastern Region after a health walk organized by the MPP that a party will do whatever it can to retain power in the 2024 general elections. Now, he has also given a signal that the MPP will face the NDC squarely if they attempt any radical approach during the elections. His comments have, however, been met with condemnation. Before we uh, hear from Dr. Ishmael Norman, who wants the IGP to stamp his authority before the issue escalates, let's listen to excerpts from the speech of Brian Champon. Uh, but the MPP, sorry, we'll bring you the soundbite uh, later. But the MPP has defended a comment by Brian Champon, whereas the NDC says it is also ready to face them. 
We can now listen to the national organizer of the MPP, Henry Nana Mbwache, and Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Mustafa Bande. Two major issues are containing what Honorable Brian Echampo said. First of all, yes, he said that if the NDC thinks that you're going to use violence and threats, you are going to be stopped. Look, we have had, we are in this country, and I'm, I'm surprised that sometimes when you hear this, you put the deaf ear to these things. The former president himself said that the NDC is a revolutionary party. They were born out of violence, and you're not afraid of violence. Recently, he's been heard saying that it's going to be put for put, and that the polling station is going to be hot. Not only that, their own national chairman said that even if they are blood, they are going to sacrifice it. Recently, this small boy who was arrested in Swami, saying that we are going to kill for power. When he was arrested and he was released on bail, he was granted bail, they celebrated him. A lot of their national officers are running around making statements that seeks to frighten him the electorate. So what Honorable Van Example was telling them is that, look, if you think that you are going to use violence, and if you think that you are going to use threats, then you'll be stopped. And on the issue of we not handing power over to them, he promised that on the economic recovery, economic turnaround that we are seeing, specifically he mentioned the stabilization of the city, and he also mentioned the falling prices of poor. So yes, we are very confident that because of this, because we are going to manage them, because we are going to see a turnaround, we are not going to hand power over to them. I mean, this is a fair statement. He didn't even say that even if NDC wins, we are not going to hand power over to them. This is a positive statement. And for that, this has energized our base. What officials of government have started doing is just an indication of failure. And they have realized that the only alternative to stay on to power is to breed violence as they have done in the past. But I can assure them that we live in a country that has been very peaceful, a country where there are many people who have lived to see this country develop to this extent. We will not allow hooligans to take the country to hostage and let not anyone underestimate the power of civil reaction to the extent that if only if Kenyans vote for the NDC and we have evidence that we have won an election, we can assure them that they will leave. They will leave power and Ghana will leave on. We can now hear from security analyst Dr. Ismail Norman, who wants the IGP to invite Brian Achampon over his comment. Yeah, Mamabi, our constitution actually is quite flexible on freedom of speech. And what Mr. Achampon was saying is actually his opinion and not the opinion of the party. And the statement, his opinion, is definitely inconsistent with the constitutional framework of when to hand over power to the winning party. Political posturing, uh, as he was doing, is not against the law. In fact, to be fair, NDC has also done some political posturing that they have a violent past. So if this is what MPP want, they can respond in equal measure. Both of them are allowed to make such speeches. However, hmm. there is a thin line between energizing the political base and weaponizing them. If this kind of talk continues, then Mr. Achampong himself will be considered to be an unethical political leader because 
political leader would adhere to the rule of law and comply with what, what they say. So both of them cannot afford to alienate us, the population, or the voters. So for the meantime, I think it's just posturing. However, the security agencies must be super alert because their work is already cut out for them. It's going to be now, wow. So we all know that. Hmm. Or the lead to election is going to be now, wow. Dr. Norman, it's interesting you say this was uh, Brian Champong speaking in his uh, personal capacity. A while ago, I spoke to Henry Nanabwaj, who is a national organizer of the NPP, and he says the party endorses Brian Champong's comment. So it's become a party matter now. Oh, okay. Then that is something else that we all have to be worried about. Because uh, if this is what the party is saying, then I think uh, NDC should also get itself prepared. And the people of Ghana should be more discerning and, and tell these two parties, if you don't heal to good order and speak politely to each other, us will not vote in the election. And we've seen that before in this country. So I think it is a very irresponsible position to be taking. I don't think any political party should go out and say we support what you are doing like in America, Donald Trump's uh, instigation of January 6th. The, polit the Republican Party didn't say we come to support you. They didn't publicly declare that. So for the the party hierarchy to say that they support him, this is sad. This should not be. This is an act of desperation. However, we are so far away from 2024, this kind of posture is going to happen. The Peace Council is not going to allow it to continue. The chief imam's office is not going to sit idle and let it happen. Um, there are so many institutions that have interest in a peaceful election. They will all weigh in and uh, put pressure on these parties to conform to good behavior. I believe that. So, meanwhile, um, you know, the supporters are making a lot of noise. But when we're getting close to, when they realize that the voters will not go for this kind of talk, this kind of conduct, they will chill. I believe that they will chill. Dr. Ishmael Norma was speaking on the Super Morning Show on Joy FM now, as speaking on that same show. Executive Director for the Institute for Democratic Governance, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Akwete, wants the president to intervene before the situation escalates. Given that he's a minister and he's a member of parliament and he makes the statement, uh, it cannot be taken lightly and given the precedent or antecedent. And that is why I endorse the point that the police ought to invite him for interrogation. Probably this is something that should be done and the public fully aware and seen and informed so that it will deter further action. Um, I, I also think that um, the state we are now, as I said, we are not immediately towards uh, uh, December. Uh, I don't know if elections will be in December or November uh, in 2024. But we have enough time to also deal with this mobilization of vigilantes and uh, the militant wings of the parties and so on and so forth. And, and it is good enough time for the police to step up, maybe. But, but finally, I think the person to speak is the president on this matter and his ability to dismiss it as not his policy is extremely important because he took action against Brian de Champon. Uh, the committee report, uh, you remember the short commission report on what happened and how they were mobilized and so on, didn't get fully implemented. Other things were, were rejected as they overstepping their boundaries. But there's a precedent. In 2008, the 2008 elections, okay, uh, uh, that led us to the handover to PNDC in 29. You know, we had three presidential elections. Uh, the question of handing over or not is settled by the president. And President Kufu at the critical moment said, hey, uh, my fellow MPPs, <laughs> go to court if you have issues. But for me as president, I would hand over 
according to the constitution. He's there to uphold the constitution, and we expected him to do that. And he set the precedent. And I think that would also be done. Let's stay a bit longer on this Brian Champion's political comment and founding member of the New Patriotic Party, Dr. Yahoo Yahoo Tamaklu, has also condemned the remarks by the Agric minister. Now, uh, my colleague Samuel Mbura joins us via Zoom with details of a statement he issued on his misgivings. Samuel, uh, what are the exact concerns of Dr. Yahoo Tamaklu? All right, Kojo, uh, in the statement that was issued today, mm. titled Brian Champion, the irresponsible cabinet minister. Uh, Mr. Nyahonyaho Tamaklo says he's writing as an elderly citizen of Ghana and a founding member of the New Patriotic Party who cannot sit down unconcerned in the face of such destructive political statements by some recalcitrant elements in the political class. Without mm -hmm. doubt, he says the statement by Brian Champon can lead this nation into destruction beyond the extent the Akufodo government has caused. It goes further to indicate that the statement made by Mr. Brian Achampong during the MPP unity walk at Co on the 8th of April 2023 is not only irresponsible, but also violent and destructive. A statement that is senseless and uncalled for. And for Mr. Achampong, a cabinet uh, minister of the Republic of Ghana, to have said that the MPP will not hand over power to the NDC, even if the opposition wins and whatever or whichever way, will employ to ensure MPP stays in power beyond 2024, we will employ is not only directed at the NDC, but it is dangerous or a dangerous threat to our democracy and the 1992 constitution. He says he would like to assure Mr. Brian Champon that some of uh, them will not sit down unperturbed as he seeks to press the destructive button um, mm. of the Fourth Republic. And we are resolved in our determination he goes to, uh, into the archives to reference the removal of the Osajifu, uh, the removal of Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Ghana's first president in 1966. Um, he says this nation has never known peace uh, politically and economically. He said we have had series of coup d'etat and the political class comes in for a period and the military takes over, a situation which has retarded our development rather than help it. Uh, this has gone on since 1966 until uh, finally through the blood and sweat of gallant soldiers and civilians alike. And we had a constitutional rule in 1992. So he goes further to say that some of us in the MPP will not sit down unconcerned mm. for such irresponsible behaviors mm. alien to the MPP and inimical to national development to continue. Uh, development is what our country greatly requires now. And as a cabinet minister, that is what Brian Champon should address on political platforms mm. such as it was offered him last saturday and he concludes by advising mr achampon to as a matter of urgency withdraw and render an unqualified apology to the good people of ghana for making such destructive unlawful unguided unnecessary and unintelligent political statements he says our time is for sound ag arguments and on bread and butter issues not hooliganism Okay. Now, uh, is that how he, he wants the issue to be resolved or he offers any recommendation of dealing with the matter? Uh, so he is, um, I mean, basically calling on him to uh, render an apology and the party should take it up from there. Mm. All right. Uh, that's uh, my colleague, Sabo Ibra, with that statement by Dr. Nyahu Nyahu Tamakle, founding member of the New Patriotic Party now, still on this matter. Uh, Buakwa South MP Samuel Atachia has defended a comment by his colleague, Abetifi MP. Now, according to him, Mr. Champon's comment has been taken out of contest. And speaking on the probe on Joy News that Sunday, Samuel Atacha said Brian Champon's comment was a political one, noting that what the minister meant was that the governing party was going to break the aid. If I, it's, it's been taken out of context. I was on the stage, actually. Mm -hmm. it, it, there was nothing fiery about it. It was just in context. That, that like you having a good fight, I'll beat you to pulp. If you said that, doesn't mean that you're going to use violence or anything like that. It's a political language. Mm. So I was a bit surprised that people are giving it some violence undertones and all that. He, ne he never, I mean, exhibited anything which was a violent in character. So I was surprised. He really surprised. But I was there listening to what he said. We will not let you come to power. What does mm -hmm. it mean? That means they will never lose. hand over to power. Of course. That means we will we, we, we'll break the eight. Okay. Yeah. 
You know that you don't determine who is uh, the one who comes to power. Electoral Commission. So it's all like political talk. No matter the, the, the fever uh, pitch it might be, no politician determines who becomes president. The electorate will go and vote. We pray that it will be smooth. There will be, there will be any violence. And then the Electoral Commission will do its work. And then it's published. So we've done this several times. But you've, you've seen and heard the reactions, at least. The NDC has issued a statement asking for the arrest of Brian H. Champong. Out of place, you say? Totally out of place. I was very surprised that they have this overreaction. Immediately you go into that kind of frenzy, it will help the nation. Mm. They say, oh, are you sure you have the power to determine your, because of the economy you are coming back? You can also reply that way, that rather we'll boot you out. So when you say we'll boot you out, it's a metaphor. It doesn't mean we are going to use okay. our foot. We'll use our thumb. Mm. So that's Samuel Atachia there. We'll take a quick break. We'll bring you business afterwards. Stay with us. Hello, everyone. One welcome to the business segment on Joy News Desk with me, Pius Kojo Baka. Now, the state insurance company, SIC, says it is collaborating with the National Insurance Commission, NIC, to enhance education on insurance coverage in the country. The insurance co penetration we do know in Ghana is currently below 2%, a situation some industry players have described as worrying. Now, speaking on the executive lounge, um, the area manager for Accra at SIC Adli Fiabo stated that her outfit will be leveraging on its workforce to introduce innovative ways to enhance education on insurance coverage. Insurance penetration has been low um, since um, below 1% in 2009. Uh, it has come up now, um, currently a little below 2%, 2, uh, 2 but as an insurance industry, like you said, it's challenging. But we are up to the task, and uh, we are in collaboration with uh, NIC. Uh, we are educating the public, and uh, in our own way, we are also um, our marketing. Uh, we organize storms uh, to educate the people. And you, as you know, uh, SIC is a big company. We have 46 outlets and with over 600 agents. Um, with that, we are making some inroads in terms of uh, currently also we are introducing what we call the Campus Secure, uh, which is uh, very um, attractive to the millennials. Okay. And so somehow we are coming gradually, the insurance industry should be able to make uh, uh, milestones in terms of the penetration. Um, yes, um, so far I think uh, we should, we, should uh, we, we are making some efforts and hopefully we'll be able to get the insurance public to stem up. Now, the Ghana Stock Exchange has posted a positive growth for the month of March at more than 10% as compared to the previous month. There is more for you in this report. According to the March 2023 market report, the continued rally of the Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index was underpinned by dividend announcements from some listed companies and investors seeking to diversify their holdings. Volumes and values traded were up significantly by 2,730% and 588% respectively over the previous month, mostly due to the block trades in MTN Ghana shares. Total Energies recorded 39.82%, MTN Ghana with 35.87%, Unilever with 33.78% and Guinness Ghana Breweries Limited recorded 9.49%. On the other hand, the Ghana Stock Exchange fixed income market closed March 2023 with a volume traded at 5.57 billion, a decline of 39.26% and 80.18% respectively over the previous months and same period in 2022 numbers. Yields on short-term government securities came down significantly during the month the 91-day Treasury bill ended the month at 19.39% from 35.55% at the beginning of March 2023. The new government of Ghana bonds witnessed theme trading during its first full month post-domestic debt exchange program. And that will be all for business for now. I am Pius Kojo Baka.
Welcome back from the break. Now, do you know that a person who intends to donate blood is expected to have a healthy meal before the donation? Uh, have you also asked yourself, what is expected of a Muslim donor who volunteers to donate blood during the fasting hours within the holy month of Ramadan? Well, in the following report, my colleague Anna Sabit, as part of our Ramadan series, is engaging some health expert and an Islamic scholar to give answers to the above questions. Donating blood is considered a life-saving exercise, a good deed that is highly recommended for all Muslims around the world. Well, whilst this exercise is highly recommended for Muslims around the world, there are certain key steps that need to, to be adhered to before one donates. And to the fasting person, what should one do if he or she wants to donate blood? This morning we paid a visit to the blood bank of the Tichman Holy Family Hospital to throw more light on this in order to answer this question whether it is advisable for a fasting person to donate blood during the fasting periods. Gariba Marwan Abdurraouf is in charge of the blood bank of the Holy Family Hospital. Here, before you can donate blood, we have a clinical request for you, a questionnaire. After failing, going through the screening process, we will ask you to go and eat or you come into it. You need energy in order to donate blood. And those, uh, we are in the month of Ramadan. If you are fasting, you don't need to donate blood because you don't have enough energy to donate blood. So if you are fasting, medically, you are not supposed to donate blood. The immediate impact on the body as a result of donating a pint of blood is a loss of red blood cells. And in the short term, a minority of donors may experience light headaches, fatigue or nausea due to the iron or water loss. And in the case of a fasting person, he or she may lose consciousness soon after the exercise. You see, the process of donating blood is like you are losing something. At least you are donating 450 ml of blood. You understand? You are losing something. So you need to eat well. Or you can donate. If not, after donating the blood, you feel dizzy. Even some will even collapse after donating the blood. There are instances whereby people will come. Uh, uh, have you eaten? They say, yes, I've eaten. Meanwhile, the person has not eaten. Then because he wants to beat our time, he wants to beat the time, he wants to do it quick and go, the person will finish donating and the person will collapse. Garba Marwan noted that the facility has an arranged work schedule that permits Muslims to donate blood after breaking the fast. Uh, we have time, we have arranged with our staff. Here we, it's 24 7. We have morning shift. After morning, afternoon will come and night duty. So, what we normally do is this period we have organized ourselves very well. When it's 7 o'clock, our Muslim brothers who are coming in for donating, to donate blood, we are ready for them. After they are breaking their fast, they will come and they donate the blood to their clients. Even though there's been series of educative sessions over the years to get Muslim donors accept the fact that one cannot donate blood on empty stomach, there still exists some different ones who will oppose to this basic requirement. Greba is appealing to people who are donating to friends and family to possibly break their fast during extreme situations to save lives and pay later after the month. We are educating our youth. They should know the importance of fasting and donating blood. You understand? Ramadan, let me say, fasting is a very, something very important to we, the Muslims. It's the same thing to us when you are donating your blood to save somebody's life. It's equally important. And I think when you break the fast today and help that person, I think after the Ramadan, you can still replace the fast. But if the person, without, within some few minutes, if blood is not saved, the person will lose life. How will you get the person back? From the Black Bank of the Tichman Holy Family Hospital, we tried seeking for the religious perspective on this development. Malam Mansur Anas is an Islamic scholar here at the Tichman Al Sunnah Central Mosque. When it comes to blood donation regarding a person who is fasting, the ruling on it is not permissible because uh, upon donating blood, it reduces the strength of a person. To fast for about 13 or 14 hours. So it's not permissible for you to 
donate blood as we are in a state of fasting. At this minute, we know a fasting person is not permitted to donate blood during the fasting hours. But what does one do when he or she has to donate in order to save a life? When it becomes necessary to save a life, what Ulama, the scholars, said is, he says that you have to dig the fast and then donate the blood so that you can save your life. So later, after the month of Ramadan, we pay back that day. This is the ruling. But is there a Quranic verse to back this claim? Allah, the Almighty said in the Quran, that woman ahiyaha fakannama ahiyin nasa jamiya, that if you help to sustain your life, it's like you are helping the entire mankind to live. So there's nothing wrong with that. Well, at this juncture, you should know that it is highly not advisable for a fasting person to, do, to donate blood during the fasting hours. This is because the person may lose consciousness and in a worst case scenario, lose his or her life if the person fails to adhere strictly to the instruction that one need not to donate blood on empty stomach. From the blood bank of the Tichman Holy Family Hospital, and for joining us, my name is Anna Salit, reporting. And that's all in our bulletin for today. There's more news on myjoyonline.com. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. Thanks for your attention and, and do enjoy the rest of our shows. Good morning.